Welcome back to WSAZ Gives Thanks. If you hear some sizzling, we're already <laughs> getting going here because Rob is going to show us how to make his famous corn souffle. Already making the roux, which is how it all starts. But I got to tell you, this was something where we wanted uh, you know, a vegetable, something healthy with all of these holiday meals that can right. be so rich. So this is a corn souffle, and I know souffle sounds so highfalutin, it's not as hard as it sounds. And all this is, is a little butter and a little flour to make a simple, simple roux. This is something that also sounds like, oh my, that is so highfalutin. Right. It's not, it's just flour, butter, and then I have taken some cans of corn, the corn that's going to be the mainstay of this, mm -hmm. any can of corn will do. Drained it into a measuring cup, added enough cream to make two cups, and then I'm going to just make a simple roux. And this is the base of the souffle. And this is the base of the whole souffle. Okay. And I gotta tell you, I'm gonna do it faster than you should because Here, a I'll great hold the, I'll hold the pan because we're spinning great around souffle here. souffle is done slowly yes. and mixed it. Otherwise you get lumpy flour in it. You don't want that. But for the purpose of TV, I'm gonna go a little faster than normal. Because you wanna cook it and long enough so the taste of flour is out of there, exactly. right? Exactly, no, you certainly don't want a clump of right. flour in your souffle. So just stir it in until it gets the clumps out. And I'm, again, I'm gonna go a little faster than normal to make this. But I'm gonna add all two cups and that is the corn water basically and cream to make two cups to go with that flour just a couple of tablespoons and a couple tablespoons of butter and what that'll do is that will form a thickened cream and you use that corn water because that is a big thickening agent sure so you don't drain the corn leave them in the don't dump the corn water out gotcha but you'd keep that in there once this gets boiling and again I'm gonna go a little yeah, faster. Yeah, we're still than looking normal. a little clumpy, but yeah. for TV's sake, we'll and, keep it going. And I will keep the the hotter it gets, the more those clumps will disappear. But I want to go fast enough to show you the whole routine of it. And you want to do medium, or you want to do low and slow? Right now, you want it to boil. Okay. So you want it to get up to high, up. high heat Great. to get this whole mixture to boil. You don't want this to go later on heat, yeah. but to get this going, then it's a simple, simple mixture of elements. It is quarter cup of sugar. Okay. I have diced a half of a green pepper and one of those little four ounce jars of diced pimentos, mm -hmm. half of that jar, just half. Pimento, the base and of every good holiday add recipe. Add that in, add in the two cans of corn that have been drained, mm -hmm. and remember we've already used the liquid from it, and add those in. And now, Lisa, I'm gonna put you to work. Okay, great. Because there are two things that need to happen now. All right. This needs to heat up, because basically for about three minutes, you want those green peppers and the pimentos to cook, cook so bit. that they're not as crunchy and you want them cooked down just a shade. And this will go. Okay. Now, the next two items are, I have separated four eggs. Yes. And this is where the souffle part of it comes in. Otherwise, it's just a corn pudding. Right. But to make it that whole souffle thought, I need you to make some egg whites. Oh, wow. Which is, I've already separated the eggs, so she has the egg whites in the bowl. Uh-huh. Turn that sucker up to high and put it in, and I'm serious, all I've, the way to high. I feel like I am yep. being tasked with the most important part of the souffle. You have, you have, and then I have this, and I'm gonna reach over you and steal okay. a spatula. I put the egg yolks just in a cup when I separated them, and they will go into the boiling mixture. And by the way, this isn't boiling, so it's not gonna work perfectly right now, but this is also a thickening agent. And do those I, egg do yolks. I go for a certain amount of time? Do I keep going? No, you, uh, the idea of an of a egg white is it has to have stiff peaks. Oh, so we're going. And so, yeah, Got you it. want okay. that to go. And also, if you do have a boiling mixture here, you do not want the egg yolks to go in here without constant stirring. Otherwise, you're going to end up with ooh, scrambled eggs inside of your corn souffle. And since this wasn't all that hot to start with, I don't have that danger, but it will cook down eventually. We're getting closer over here. Yeah, I'm starting to see some peaks. Yes, things, things are happening. Uh -huh. You have nailed it. You have nailed it. 
and believe it or not, this is actually one of Rob's staple recipes in your house. It's this a is a fa family favorite. Uh, uh, this is one my daughter begs for. When we have a holiday meal, Thanksgiving, Christmas, you name it, even when she comes back home to visit, she doesn't live in West Virginia anymore, she always begs for this. This is one of her absolute favorite things that I make. Yep, you nailed it. We're good. You. Stiff yep. peaks? You can see stiff peaks in it. Perfect. She asks me to make this. So this is kind of our family tradition, and it used to be only on the Thanksgiving meal, it kind of progressed to now it's anytime Ginny begs for it. Yeah. Here comes anytime a corn souffle town. from dad. Okay. And one of my problems is I don't, hold on to that. Oh, one of my on. problems is I don't have this boiling yet, but I'm going to do it anyway. Hand me the souffle pan. Okay. And I am going to pour this. This should be, and please back up. I don't want to burn you. Okay. This should be a lot thicker. And if you had cooked it, the required amount of time, this would have been a lot, lot thicker. But for time's sake, I'm gonna show you what I'm up to. So, you take all the coin mixture and put it in there, mm -hmm. and you get the green peppers and the pimentos in on this. Oh, I've left out my seasonings. The salt, the pepper, I love a little paprika in it too. Add some color too. Uh-huh, and some smoky flavor. salt and pepper to taste. Some people love pepper, some people hate pepper. My wife, not a pepper eater at all. Right. So I usually leave pepper completely Whatever out. Whatever you like. And then, Get a spatula here. Okay. And then this is where the key comes in. You fold, you don't mix. You put a little in, you put a little corn over it. Basically, this is whipping air into those egg whites. And if you don't fold it in carefully, all you're gonna do is take all the air right back out of it and you're gonna have one flat souffle. And it's not a souffle anymore. And it's, it's no longer a souffle, it's, a it's just a, yeah, exactly. It's just a mishmash and you don't okay. want that. And again, this corn, would be thicker if I had cooked it mm -hmm. for the about five minutes that it would normally take. And you can do it while this is warm. Absolutely, it's gonna be hot, yep. Yeah. Cause it's about to go into an oven. Okay. And the whole time I've preheated an oven to 350 to make this. But just get it in there, folding is the key. Mm -hmm. You're just folding. And then once you've got it all in there, and spread it around. Spread it around. That goes into an oven, 350, 30 to 35 minutes, and you end up with yeah, a this, souffle. this doesn't look like much, but once it's all done, you end up with a souffle that looks like that, except mine has collapsed a little bit TV, because TV I took magic too there long to get it to you. But that corn souffle is fantastic, and it's fairly healthy because it's green pepper, it's pimento, it's corn, all your veggies, and and then a couple of eggs to go in, and so it's absolutely something you can have as a side dish that's yeah. healthy and yet really tasty and elegant. Yeah, good good crowd pleaser there too. Yeah, awesome. Thank you so much. Hey, and when we come back, Kimberly Keggy's with us, and she's going to show us how to make a very easy holiday craft customizable for any occasion. 